It's 10 minutes in and my heels already hurt. It is so difficult when you have to wear heels all day long and you weigh almost 120 pounds. I'm just kidding, I'm nowhere near that. Don't publish that. Oh my God, libel. Correction! <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Miss Cracker, and it's time for a tutorial from a Jew. That's a Jew-torial. This is a brand new web series. Is that what it's called? You've got questions, I've got answers, about drag life and drag life. I'm not wearing nails today because I'm trying to teach you a lesson. In these first episodes, things are gonna get a little bit hairy where I tell you about my favorite thing in the world. Hair, damn it! As you know, in drag, one day you're hair, the next, you're out. If you're a baby queen strolling down the aisles of a beauty store, here are some of the rules you need to keep in mind while you are shopping for the wig for your gig. What makes a high quality wig? Is it just about money? And the answer is, not necessarily. I'm gonna tell you the top five things that you need to look for in a wig that will let you know that what you're bringing home is silky, soft, and is gonna make you look expensive like Manny Hanny. We live in an age where drag competition is extremely fierce. The last thing you want is to look like you are wearing a shake and go wig. If an audience sees a shake and go wig, they're gonna shake and go. The first thing you need to look for in a beautiful wig is a nice lace front. First of all, the color should match your skin tone. So when this gets glued to your face, it looks real nice and seamless. The lace should be full and long, and when you hold it, it should be able to flop right down. If the lace is stiff, that means it's plastic. And when you glue it to your face, it will cast shadows on your skin, giving you a terrible dark frame on your face. Turn it around on the inside, and you can see that the lace extends an inch away from the hairline. There's all this space where the hair is beautifully hand tied. For a cheaper wig, this area will only be about a centimeter thick. That means that this ribbon right here is gonna show every time you lean your head forward. You do not want that. Some wigs are 100% lace, from the front all the way down to the back of your head. If you can afford that, God bless you. But this is a tutorial, honey. We are looking for a little bit of a bargain. But why does it matter if you have a nice soft lace? I'll tell you. This rule brings us to this week's Jews and Don'ts. Do you get a wig like Bianca Del Rio? You cannot clock that lace. The fabric is nice and soft, laying directly on her face. You don't see any wig, all you see is hair. There's no ribbon here, and the hairline doesn't look like it was made by a machine. It looks like the hairs are growing here, there, everywhere, right out of her scalp. Do not get a hard lace or a hard front. If you're wondering what that looks like, it's kind of like this. There's none of the lace and all of the track just staring your audience right in the face. Some queens do not mind at all if their wig looks cheap. Katya is fine with looking crazy, so let's have a look at a few of her wigs. Throw the montage! There's hard edges, they're a little bit choppy, a little bit flat, she doesn't mind. Do you? Number two, the tracks. You want your wig to be nice and tight, just like honey, look at the tracks. They should be college ruled, very close together, nice and pinched. If you can pass a fist between the tracks, it is not the right hair for you, sweetie. Number three, the right size. In the wig game, just like any other, size matters, honey. It's not that the wig has to be big, it just has to fit you perfectly. Let's be honest here, every person has a different size head. While Violet Tchotchke has an 18 inch waist, I believe I heard that Kim Chi has a 27 inch head. She doesn't have to go wig shopping herself, she just sends her personal shopper with a watermelon. All I'm asking you to do when you buy a wig is what you would do with any piece of clothing. Try the bitch on. Notice this beautiful Perfidia wig. When I pull the hair aside, you can see that the lace falls all along where my natural hairline would be. It's not, you know, behind my goddamn ears. Sometimes you'll take a wig home and it's basically a yarmulke, which as a Jewish girl, I appreciate, but it may not be the look you're going for, honey. It's not that much trouble to hassle the 
girls behind the counter, try the wig on, and see if it's something you want to pass over. <laughs> Number four, choosing a hair color that's right for you. Not every hair color is right for every queen. People ask me all the time, Cracker, why do you choose blonde? It's all about light and color, darling. To the human eye, light colors look bigger. I am a Jewish girl. Everybody knows I have very strong features. When I wear a big, bright, fluffy blonde wig, it makes my face look small compared to what's going on up here. <laughs> is it working? If you want another example of a big face in the business, just look at Trixie. Her contours have carved that turkey down. <laughs> but she still wears nice, big, blonde, fluffy wigs to give herself a hand. On the other end of the spectrum, of course, we have Violet Chotchke. The bitch likes to look small and sleek. If you want to choose that, this is what we're talking. A darker wig is gonna make your head seem much smaller. But beware. Violet Chachki gets away with this because she has a beautiful feminine jawline and high, beautiful cheekbones. If you do not have these things, you are gonna look like a falcon. Your nose will come forward and look big. Your face will look full when it's framed by that dark hair. Go ahead and try it, but beware. Number five, last but certainly not least, how much it should cost. As a Jewish gal, I am very focused on quality, but even more focused on the damn price. When I go hunting for a wig, I go through the five stages of Jewish grief. Bargaining, 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 and bargaining. I want a wig that looks expensive, but doesn't hurt me in the wallet, in the bitty wallet. <laughs> a lot of girls think that you have to spend a lot of money to get a nice lace front. This bitch cost me $30. Look at every single thing that I walked down the runway. Not a one of those was more than $30. And I got away with it. Sashay away. What matters with the wig is not the price tag, but what you do with it. In the next couple of episodes, I'm gonna show you how to take a wig that has all the great qualities you need, from the lace, to the tracks, to the colors, and I'm gonna tell you how to make it look like a million bucks at the end of the day. Like that, and that, and that, and this. This is literally just two $30 wigs. And once the cat was out of the bag and onto my head, it looked like a Persian darling. I could go on all day about the intricacies of what makes a lace front perfect, but this is all you have to remember. If it feels wrong, it probably is wrong. Get the lace front that makes you say, yes, this is it! Sad that class is over for today? Don't worry, next week, Shul will be back in session with more tutorials. That's a tutorial from a Jew. Until then, lots of love from your good Judy, Miss Cracker. Judy? Judy? No? Uh, okay, I'm right, fine. I can't work like this! Whoa, she's like the Jay-Z of Jew jokes.